Terry. Talk to me, Dan. People have been on us for months. Months. They want to look like us. They want to be us. Don't know why, but it's true. So we've gone out and designed some shirts, some merchandise. Because I'm sick of people forgetting that it's pronounced Nico Hines. Look, the other thing as well is people want to know what fits his reaction lights in the box. So we've got the three faces of fits. We've got mad fits, glad fits, and sad fits. And to complete the ensemble, we've got a fins up hat. You know, in case you want to give your mates the old FU. Dan, that's, that's not what it means. No, like you call mum, hey mum, FU. She's like, Dan, FU, you know. Right. So that lady that... Yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Rugby League Outlaws brought to you by our great friends at Top Sport, onelittlefootyfan.com.au and the Stubby Club. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Dan, can't believe you're wearing a sky blue shirt on set. Isn't it beautiful, mate? Isn't it beautiful? It's beautiful. People should buy it. Do you know what else is beautiful? What's that? Queensland win the Origin Series, Dan. To some, maybe. To me. To me, not so much. What were your thoughts of the game? Horrible game. Terrible. Just not enough points. No, it was actually one of the best games you'll ever see. It was one of the best Origin games. I just kept waiting for Nathan Cleary to do something and it never happened. So, a little bit frustrated. On the balance of play, Queensland were probably the better team. Queensland were definitely the better team on the balance of play. Look, it came down to some some individual brilliance to get Queensland the position, though. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't as, you know, Queensland weren't just clear-cut, but the Ben Hunt 40-20, the driving Stephen Crichton back, forced the All the, the big error. plays Yeah, came all the big plays came from yeah, Queensland. Yeah, absolutely. And look, New South Wales had the chances. They just didn't take them. And, you know, everyone just by default, oh, the ref this, the ref that. No, not the ref the re this, the ref that. Nathan Cleary this. Stephen Crichton that. Mm -hmm. Other Panther players this. I, thought, I actually thought Ashley Klein was great. He was fantastic. It was nothing to do. Queensland was just a better team. They wanted it more. They won the big moments and they won the series. Good luck to them. Mm -hmm. That's what Origin is all about. I'm, you know. Daily Cherry Evans, is he the, que is he the uh, well, he is the Queensland number seven. Is he the Australian number seven? Undisputedly, yes. Yeah. He well, won all the big moments. Now, if Cam Munster has his off-season surgery, then obviously Nathan Cleary will just slot into the six spot, or DCE goes to the six, and Cleary's in the seven. But for mine, you can't take it away from Daniel Cherry Evans being the uh, the Australian halfback for one last time. No. Uh, ben Hunt, does he start at nine? Do you have Harry Grant? Is Damien Cook out of the team now? Yes, he yeah. is, absolutely. It, look, the, the entire spine can be maroon. I know Tedesco will get in mm -hmm. because he's done so much, but Ponger outplayed him in game three. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Paddy Carrigan, oh, he's come from shoo. nowhere. He's an absolute shoe. I don't I think he player. is. No, he's an absolute shoe, and it's not even. Close. He was like he was great in this series, but before him, like doesn't matter. If you have a look at the preview for game one. I was like Paddy Carrigan, Thomas Flegler. I want a Flegler in over. I yeah. want a Carrigan, and I feel vindicated. It's good to finally get one right. If you name the kangaroo side today, there's more Queenslanders than Blues. That's because your players seem to be declaring for other countries, including Victor Radley who has today oh. come out and said he's playing for England, which is probably smart from Victor because he ain't playing for New South it's Wales. It's very smart from Victor. Now, there was a humongous blow-up on Saturday night when this was released. Oh, no one's got passion for the Blues, this and that. Right now, Terry, I want to take a moment to undeclare for New South Wales because I have about as much chance of getting picked as Victor, Victor Radley does. Yeah. Yeah, look, uh, Victor Radley probably looked up he, his chances of it, right? I know Dave Riccio wrote the article that, you know, you needed him and you needed Jack White in there for some, you know, some passion, some hard hitting. But, hey, look, if Radley can't get ahead of Jake Tavoyevich, he ain't getting in there. His chance at rep football is to play for England. He said he's always wanted to do it. It's the first I've ever heard about yeah. it. Um, Forever, ever, ever, since three days ago. Yeah. Uh, Jerome Luai as well has come out and said that he's going to play for Samoa. Good. I rate that. Fantastic. Toto for Samoa. I rate yeah. that. That's fantastic. I have no problems with anyone saying they want to play for their background. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, where's the negativity in that, Terry? There is none. Shut up. No, absolutely not. I'm, I'm with you on this one here. But oh, speaking yeah. of a man who's got passion, Andrew Johns, full-time, had his little blow-up. Mm. You know, there was, the, there was the opinions on it. Did he overstep the mark? Was he passionate? I think he was somewhere in the middle. Yeah, that, who cares? Yeah. It's one of the greatest players of all times, annoyed that his state lost a game they should have won. I, oh, no. I, oh, no, Terry. I think, I think the thing that really revved him up was that Fatty asked him the question with a beaming smile on his face. I think he had every right to. Yeah, of course he did. Of course he had. Winners write history, mate. 
But I mean, like that that you know that burger eating grin from Fatty asking Andrew Johns a question like, "Why are you so upset?" You, that's the reaction you're going to get. Had it been you know the host of the show asking Joey a question, you probably would have got a different response. But Smith and Vaughton are sitting there like elbowing each other, you know, going, "Oh, how great's this?" Joey's miserable. Like that's what you want. Like good on him. But I haven't seen that from Brad Fittler post post the, the you know like. Fittler is, I think it's fair to say that Fittler's a little bit more mature than Andrew Jones. Mm -hmm. I don't mean that as a knock on Joey. No. Joey's very easy to stir up, whereas Fittler's, you know, I don't think anything you can say can bother him, which which is, you know, got its positives and its negatives, but I have no problem with what was said on either edge. Of course you're going to have a go at him. Paul Gallen was made to put a cane toad thing on. Yeah, and load the bags on the, the bus. And load the bags, and he did it, and he didn't look happy doing it. Just like Darren Lockyer did in game two when he had to hang off the Perth Stadium when they lost. You've just lost a state of origin. You can't be, oh, oh, well, we'll get him next year. No problems. Again, shut up. Dan, our Tigers are out making headlines. They certainly are. Our Tigers. Negative headlines. <laughs> Thank you, Wes. Uh, look, it's been confirmed that Tim Sheens has appointed himself at the club, gone and sacked Michael Maguire, Interviewed himself in a mirror, shook his own hand. Congratulations, Tim. Welcome yeah, two-year deal, $1.5 million per season. a year. Yep. Yeah, that's. You, have you heard anything different? Or? Well, I've heard 1.8, but I, I think it's somewhere in between. Like, I can't believe he's 2.3 mil a season. Yeah, look, if you're going to go go interview yourself, you might as well give yourself the 2.5 you command. Now, uh, oh, it's <laughs> Benji Marshall has signed a five-year deal. Robbie Farah has signed a five-year deal as, deal as well. And if there's anything we know, it's Robbie Farah in contracts never mm. breaks him. Yeah, look, I know that it's the DNA of the Tigers, but like, they, you know, 2005 aside, these guys didn't really achieve much. Well, they haven't played final football <laughs> since, so... <laughs> look, I love Benji. I love him as a character. I love him as a football mind. He's probably my favourite analyst because he can be funny, but he, yeah. he's also very serious. So I think it's a good move in that who's going to want to coach the Tigers? And who's going to want to take over Tim Sheens in two years? Yeah. No one. Put Benji in. Put Farrow as his right-hand man. Those two can lead the club. I think it does buy them five years, though. Because for the next two, it doesn't really matter. It's rebuilding to Benji. But if Tim Sheens doesn't put a decent side in front of Benji Marshall, a rookie coach in two years' time, then what? Another five-year rebuild? But they're, they're saying that, you know, the juniors who won the SG ball and, you know, how they win in Harold Matts and their flag team's going okay now, these are the guys that are going to be ready. But you're banking that on all the juniors. You've still got to attract other talent to go there. Um, look, I think this is the only decision the Tigers had. They went all in on Cameron Serraldo. They played this out in the media. They did. He's come and had a look at our centre of excellence. He's come and had a look at this. He's interviewed with it. He's done it's tours. a shed. He's done tours of everything else. He's come and seen our luxury gym that we've got. No one after that was going to want to apply for the Tigers job because you were always going to be second best. Like they were Serraldo or nothing. So I think all the guys like Shane Flanagan, Andrew Webster, all these other coaches that are off now probably looked at the Tigers and went... Not the place for us because they didn't want us in the first place. So very true. It was either this or you proceed with Brett Kamali. Now Brett Kamali's come out yesterday and said the Panthers were disrespectful by not naming the Origin stars. They just beat you. Yeah. What? What do you want to lose by forty? Just take the chance. Yeah, like he's showing his. Well, I mean, the other week we joked that the Panthers New South Wales Cup team would beat the Tigers, and they did that. Ta da! Uh, Naughty. It was it was probably respectful that they did rest the stars because you would have got an absolute hiding. They got away with it. Yeah. Oh, God. Dis you want to speak disrespectful? Naming Ben Hampton in the halves against the Sharks. They got what they deserved. If you want to speak disrespectful, Joseph Manu. Oh, oh, oh okay. I saw a blow-up about this, and I thought, what? I don't remember that because we're watching a far more important game, but more about that later. So those who didn't see it, Joey Manu gets the ball, breakdown in play, grabs at his, his leg. Yeah. Like, oh, I got a cramp. Everyone stops, through the line, try assist. Good or bad? Terrible. Terrible. Like, if I was the video referee, I would have, like, found a way to take the try off him. Absolutely. I'd be like, Joseph Manu knocked this ball on. You can't convince me otherwise we have a decision. <laughs> it is what it is. Mate, what? That like, was horrible. Like, I, 
I already don't think much of Joseph Manu and what little bit I thought of him has gone out the window. It, completely fair. I, yeah. I'm a huge Joe Manu fan. I'm on record as, as praising him in every chance I get. This was pathetic. Yeah, there's, there's levels of sportsmanship in the game yeah. and that just wasn't it. Like if he stopped and everyone stops and he goes through, oh, well, that's on the defence. But he's injured. You see the players go to grab him and he runs through a line. That was despicable. Yeah. You know, I haven't seen enough negativity about that. Everyone's blowing up about the things that are great. That was terrible. Terrible. Absolutely. Terrible. Keeping on the lines of terrible. Ryan Pappenhausen gone for the season. Horrible news. Confirmed a shattered kneecap. Not just a fracture, a shattered kneecap. Full praise to him because he made that tackle on Jack White and, and he was having a good game. Like he, he was breaking the, the Raiders at will. He's, it's just his passes were all over the place. But just as he went to make that tackle, his leg slipped out. Knee on knee collision. Awful. Awful stuff. Ends his season and potentially next as well. We had Royce Hunt do something not as bad and he yeah, missed Patel a tendon, year yeah. of football. And I mean, Royce Hunt's obviously a different body type to Ryan Pappenhausen. Maybe that'll come into it, but I mean, that's terrible. You never like seeing any player get mm. injured, especially a gruesome injury and a superstar of the game. He's, he's, we've been robbed of a season of Ryan Pappenhausen. He's only been on the field for 10 games and he was leading the Daly M's by a country mile. Yeah, it's a, it's a real shame. I mean, there's no, no fault, yeah. nothing. It's just one of those things that happen. Yeah. But I do have to say, Jack White made a break, had an unarmed player, and ran over Pappenhausen rather than passing. I wish he'd just passed the ball. I, I, th I think Jack White took the safety first play on that. There were Melbourne players around. You know, if you pass the ball, you drop it, or he gets tackled, quick play the ball. They got the two points from the penalty. They got the two points from the game as well. Now, to round this out, Dan, Cole Flanagan ignited a beast in Cody Walker and the South Sydney Rabbitohs. If you didn't see it, 22 all. Paul Vaughan scores, makes it 26-22 with a kick to come. Cole Flanagan goes and gives Cody Walker an absolute mouthful. The Rabbitohs fire up cool. and go on with it. it they go on and score six, yeah, 16 unanswered points. Um, Inexperience from the young lad. Oh, man, like... Kyle Flanagan was having a really good game as well. Two try assists, kicking well, defending well. But That's all you'll remember. Yeah, don't talk until the game's over, Kyle. Hey, Cody Walker, one of the best players in the game. You suck, you suck, you suck, you suck, you suck. Not smart. Inexperience, no. not good. You know, say it in the 80th minute, not in the 65th. Yeah, that's it. Wait till the game's over to, uh, to say your piece. But, yeah. uh, oh well. Oh well. After having a week off, well deserved, Kate's back uh, to talk some rugby league. Probably not a good week to come back after the Sharks have handled them though. Hi guys, great to be back on the pod this week. I had myself a little hiatus while the Cowboys had a bye and we were driving back from our three and a half week road trip around Queensland, which was so much fun, but it is now back to reality, unfortunately. So I know both of you are gonna be discussing the origin decider that Queensland won, huge game. First 15 minutes was unlike any other league game I think I've ever watched. Anyone who had a player from their team on the field was praying to whatever god they worshipped that their players came out unscathed. It was absolutely brutal. I had my fingers and toes crossed so hard that they had cramps in them, but I was very happy to see that no cowboys were injured in the making of that film. I have to give a shout out to little Tommy Dearden, who was exceptional on debut. I was lucky enough to interview Dearden just after round five earlier this year, and he really is a great young man. He's humble, he's genuine, and he spoke to me about the improvements he needed to make in his game and how hard he's had to work on his self-confidence this season. His performance last Wednesday is what was to date the biggest game of his fledgling career and it's a real testament to the competitor he is. He's certainly come a long way since being shown the door by the Broncos and I think he's one that they'll regret letting go in the years to come. The other Tommy, Tommy Gilbert. We're going to lose him next year to the Dolphins and he is an absolute steal for them. Tommy played almost 80 minutes in his debut and he was absolutely solid on the night. Gilbert is all heart and I think a future leader in that Maroons team. Now, obviously I think the best team won on the night. And as I said, I know that you'll both be discussing the ins and outs of the clash and where Queensland got it right and perhaps where New South Wales faltered. You'll no doubt also be talking about the biff between Gagai and Burton. 
Gagai threw the first punch, I understand that. I think it was a huge error on his behalf. And in fact, he's very lucky, I think, that he's not going to be sidelined for a few weeks as well. But I did want to talk about this a little bit more in depth because it's been a huge talking point post-match, possibly and unfortunately overshadowing the skill and athleticism of the players and, and the game that was played on Wednesday night as these incidents always do. Now, I'm not going to get on my soapbox here, but I think it's worth talking about this on-field incident in the context of why it got under the skin of a lot of viewers and fans. There's always varying shades of opinions when it comes to these sorts of incidents on the sporting field. But if we look at it with a wider lens in terms of issues that we see within our own society, we can maybe start to appreciate why seeing this sort of thing in sport matches grates on some people. It's been widely reported that during large sporting events, domestic violence and non-domestic violence issues rise. In an article published in 2018 by journalist Jenna Price, Price wrote, there is a massive spike in the rate of family violence in New South Wales on rugby league state of origin game days. This research was based on six years of data from the New South Wales Bureau of Crime Statistics and Research. The report revealed an increase of nearly 40% in domestic assaults in New South Wales on state of origin nights compared with any other Wednesday. Now, while the report makes a correlation between alcohol playing a factor in the increase of both non-domestic and dom domestic violence issues during origin, you could argue that the bigger social and cultural issue here is simply violence in general. And I think it is a genuine question to ask, why are we seeing a violent outburst like this on a sporting field? If they behave like that on the street or at any other establishment, they very well could be arrested for assault. We know how deadly just one punch can be. So why would athletes be throwing punches at each other's heads over a game of league? There is a line that's crossed in sport when you purposely try to injure an opponent and it was crossed the other night. As it always does, Twitter lends itself to a range of differing opinions and this incident was no exception. On one hand, we saw Sam Squires, sports journalist for Fox Sports, tweet passionately about how the media needed to do better regarding the, how the beef was celebrated. She went on to say, don't let a new generation of young men think it's okay to raise fists in anger because their idols did last night. Set a better example. In absolute contrast, in, in a rather worrying tweet, the member for Q in Victoria, Tim Smith, thought it was reassuring to see some beef and some passion, qualifying that statement by alluding to the fact that men punching each other in the head was in fact what old fashion Australian masculinity was all about. Australian masculinity, punching each other in the head. Yeah, no, not at all, Tim. I'll finish up by saying that there was enough talent on the field the other night to light up the stadium like New Year's Eve fireworks. The only talking points after the game should have been around the monumental efforts of those who gave it everything and left nothing on the field. If it's socially unacceptable to punch someone in the head in the middle of the street, then it's certainly unacceptable to do it on live TV in front of millions of viewers under the guise of passion and pride. It's either okay or it's not. Not sure you can have it both ways. Yeah, thanks, Kate. Good stuff as always. Terry. Talk to me, Dan. It's time to talk some black, white, and blue. What a week to be a Sharks fan. Favourite time of the week, Dan. Talking Sharks It's with always you. good to be a Sharks fan. It's always good, especially when you've won five games in a row. Five games in a row. It's been a while. It has, yeah. 2016 was probably the last time we've gone on a streak like this. I know we had a three or four game winning streak at the beginning of the year as well, but starting to get serious now. Um, now, in this five game win streak, seen a lot of negativity from external fans about the draw and and the play, you know the teams that we've played around oh. the origin period etc etc et um we don't control the draw we don't control the draw the storm you know obviously we got them during origin time which was great the cowboys now at the beginning of the year you and i had the cowboys at last no punter had the cowboys in the top eight or the top four let alone second no. At this point in the season, for seven Origin players. If you said to me pre-season how many Origin players, 
Val for sure. Yeah. Maybe Carl Felton. Maybe four. Or Hammer. One of them. Yeah. Three maximum. Yeah. No one knew Tom didn't. Mm. Nanai? I didn't even know who he was. Yeah. Gilbert? Yeah. Reuben Cotter last year was playing hooker. Cotter? Yeah. But the draw, Terry, the draw. <sighs> we spanked him. Yeah, we absolutely spanked him as well. Now, now, Tom Deaton could have backed up, but went and had the party of his life, right? <laughs> on it. You can't blame the kid. That, absolutely not. He, you know, he, he got the knock on his door 48 hours saying, you're going to be it. You're starting. Yeah, hey, get on and there. We're not, putting, we're not putting Ben Hunt at six. You are starting. And he was like, I'm not going to let you down. He didn't let him down. He had every right to go yeah. and party as hard as he did. Certainly. Now, obviously, we've, we played the Cowboys this week. Depleted. And beaten them. Depleted. Um, phenomenal effort from us. <laughs> But some things that came out of that game, again, the ill discipline, the too many six agains, the too many penalties, you can almost you can almost guarantee when we drop the ball, we'll give away a penalty, we'll give away two six agains, and almost certainly concede a try. Almost certainly. Another thing you can unfortunately guarantee is that Blake Bailey Simeon's coming for three weeks. Yeah. We've called it. The holding round, looking at the ref and waiting for release, the ref has no obligation to say, Blake, let go. He just yeah. chucks him off. And we'd given away about four or five in a row. That was coming. It was justified. He caught what he should have. Yeah. That can't and, happen. And, I, you know, I was, I was watching the, uh, the highlights before the show of this uh, when, you, when you guys went to get us dinner. And uh, the referee was saying to Blake, get off, get off. Gilbert gets up and tries to throw him off. And Blake's still holding. No choice. No, he had no choice. Yeah. They'd we, be peppering our We lives. can't be doing this now. We're, we're, we're coming up to a, a tough fortnight of footy. Absolutely. Yeah, Full strength sides ahead. Yeah, team. and we're, you know, we're playing the best team that the NRL has, has seen. You know, in, in the last decade, I don't care, this Penrith team is absolutely unbelievable. They've lost like five games. Yeah. So Give them an inch, they'll take a mile. Yeah, you drop the ball, give a penalty and give a six again, you might as well just go and hang out under the post because... Clear he's going to be taking a shot from somewhere. Spot on. Uh, what I do want to talk about, though, the, the positives from this game, and again, I know we had it against Melbourne, but we didn't have it like this. Nico Hines' game management. It's, it's up there with the best in, in the comp at the moment. It's very good. Now, unfortunately, there were a few kicks. One went out on the full and a kick went dead. People remember the negatives. You can do five good things and one bad thing, and everyone says, oh, yeah, but. Always on the negative. Overall... We don't win that game without Nico no. Hines. The amount of times he just sees a, you know, space, third tackle, let's just play it down their end. And we wore him down in the end. In the last 15 minutes, I didn't feel like we were ever going to give that game up because the Cowboys were exhausted mm -hmm. from turning around and rucking it off their own line. What I will say that negates Nico Hines a little bit, though, is Blake Braley's decision-making. Now, a couple of times Hines went to go right and Braley turned it to a forward on the left. You could see all night that Hines wanted to get the ball to Teague Wilton, Jesse Ramian, Sione Katoa, but we got pushed left. And this is where, when he becomes a more mature halfback, that he's going to be able to overcall that play. But right now, Blake Braley's got more runs at the Sharks than him. Yep. But, you know, Hines is super impressive. Man. Super, super, super impressive. impressive. I thought all our big players were the other day. Will Kennedy's had a couple of quiet weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, wasn't it his tremendous best? This third, this Still Friday safe night. under the high ball, though. Very, very much so. And that is where we've fallen down in the past. You know, the silly knock-ons and conceding weak tries. We conceded two tries this week with 12 men. Otherwise, we weren't really worried. No. Uh, Toby Rudolph had a monster game for us. Took it to that Cowboys four-pack. Made it personal with uh, Jason Tormalolo. Yes. Another person who had a big game again, though. We mentioned him, Jesse Ramian. Ramian is... He's red-hot form. Well, you just, just read that he's the centre of the week on NRL.com. Yeah. yeah. As he should be. He was dominant. That opening half from him was just next level. But there was a time there where every time Ramin touched a ball, he either scored or almost scored. And we decided, ah, let's cut him out. He's having too much fun over there. His super coach points too high. They should have just fed him all night. We would have won by 30. Yeah, look, he had Hammer and um, Brendan Elliott on him. Those guys aren't stopping him. No, he had him on toast is what he had. Yeah. He, he, that he has... first try was so easy. He ran and he had four people them. on him. Yeah, and he just said, see ya, and scored. Oh, oh so I love Jesse. I Ramian. love Jesse This Ramian. Jesse Ramian is beautiful. And you know who else I love? Who do you love, Terry? Jesse Colhoun getting a debut. Oh, yes. We've been calling for this for quite a while. Big boy, isn't he? He is a big boy. I am willing to say right now, 
that he's the next cab off the rank. Yeah. If, if anyone goes down injured, he's the next one up. We thought it might be Tommy Hazleton, who's done nothing wrong. No. He, he was giant for the Jets yesterday, scored another try, he's been fantastic. But the upside of this kid is ridiculous. Yeah, Je- Jesse Colhern has got it. Oh, he's got it. He has absolutely got it as well. And he came he came on and played in the uh, on the edge for Way Graham. And you could just see him like he was in the middle of the field just hitting people. And then he'd run back out to his edge and then he'd run back in to hit someone. And he wasn't shy of taking it up. Six runs, 60 metres, did his job out there as well. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm... It looked like he'd be long. I'm impressed with him as well. It's, uh, you know, it's a... It's exciting times in the Shire, mate. When's the last time we could look and say, you know, we got four or five potential superstars coming through. There's always one. Yeah. But we're talking numerous... Now, uh, to wrap this up, Dan, we play the Penrith Panthers this week. And as we've just said, arguably the best team that I, I've seen yeah, go around. Yeah, it's hard to argue with that. Uh, what are your expectations and what would you see as an acceptable result from this game? We can't get blown out. No. Nope. You cannot go in on a five-game win streak, beat the two teams above you, now one's below, which is great, and then go and lose by 40. Yeah. If we do what we did a couple of years ago to Penrith, and get blown off 40 to 10 or 40 to 6. Yeah, you know, we made 54 24. Yeah, that disgusting. Yeah. That would be demoralizing. If we go get beaten 14 12, whatever, we'll yeah. get them in the finals. You learn lessons. You know, this is a Penrith team that they're well rested. All their superstars have had over a week and a bit off. They're going to be keen to come in. They've come through Origin unscathed, but they're going to want to kick up now. This is where after Origin last year, they went into a gear no one got near. Now, I know they lost the finals. But then they went and beat them. So I'm, I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about Penrith, absolutely. But we have to worry about ourselves more. Yeah. Match them in the middle. Go with them. We can beat this side. Yeah, you can't make the mistakes. You can't, you know, we have to complete above 80%. Um, look, I mean, even if we, if we went there and lost 26-10, but the performance was... You know, you're happy with it. The completion rate was good. Couple of late Your defense was good, but, you know, just the class of them. And you've got something to build from. I'd take it. But, yeah, it, you know, if you, go and, if you go and lose by 30 and 40 points, this winning streak means nothing. Absolutely. Just quickly, Newtown Jets, top of the table. Top of the table. Yeah. yeah. Talk to me, Terry. It's time for some top sport tips. Coming off a good week. Well, one of us is coming off a good week. Yeah, one of us, that's me as well. Uh, bloody storm. You keep making me tip the Titans. Well, this is a hill you've got to die on. Now, let's start. Thursday night, Parramatta against the Brisbane Broncos. It's at Combank Stadium. I was looking at the draw. Both these teams are on 24 points, two points behind us. I was like, who are they playing this week? They come up against each other. Hopefully, it's a draw. If not, who are you tipping? Tip Brisbane. I don't like Parramatta. No. The last few weeks, they've been diabolical or just a bit better than terrible opposition. Brisbane are going to go on a run from here, separate themselves. Brisbane. I'm going to tip the Eels in a close game. I just think that Parramatta, you know, Brisbane have their fan base. I think Parramatta's stadium electricity on a Thursday night is going to nah, get Ah, electric home. Eels. Uh, Friday night at 6 o'clock, Dragons versus Manly. I only see this going one way. I think you can almost pencil the Dragons out of... Well, they're not going to win the comp because they just caught 50, but I think you can pencil them out of the top eight now. Gornskis, Manly yeah. are in. Dragons are out. Simple yeah. as that. Ruben Garrick. Oh. Superstar. Superstar in the making. DC you see got some good players out wide too. DCE went absolutely ballistic in this. I'm going Manly. In yeah, Manly by heaps. I hate them so much, but geez, dead. Yeah, speaking of two teams, I hate at 8 o'clock on a Friday night, the Newcastle Knights against the Sydney Roosters. <laughs> Joey Manu looks like he's going to keep his spot in the number six jersey for another week. They are going to flog Newcastle. They are going to flog Newcastle. It hurts me to say because I wish nothing but negative things on the Roosters. Yeah, look, when, I mean, Dan Gagy, I scored 14-12 uh, and you think, ah, oh, you know, what can Newcastle do? Then Newcastle turned into Newcastle, lost by 30. Probably the same thing will happen here. Exactly what will happen. I reckon it'll be close to just after half time and the Roosters will go, what are we doing Why, here? Yeah. And blow them off the park. 13 plus, lock it in. Super Saturday, the Canberra Raiders, their season is on life support. Ricky Stewart is not pulling that plug out yet. No. They take on the New Zealand Warriors down there in Canberra. In different form down there, but Jesus, no excuse <laughs> to lose to New Zealand. Absolutely not. This game could be played literally anywhere in the universe. 
and Canberra win by 30. The Warriors are done. Yeah. Sean Johnson is done. 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 Yeah, I'm going Canberra as well. Me too. Uh, main event for mine. Game of, Game of the, of the week. week. Game yeah. of Susan. 5.30 uh, out at Penrith Stadium. The Panthers take on our mighty Sharks. I'm gonna, I've, I've tipped them five weeks in, uh, five weeks in a row. I'm going to go for number six now. I think we're going we're gonna to do the Panthers. I'm going to go another jinx. Go for the jinx. Tip the Panthers. Might actually get one. Yeah. <laughs> for the first time in many, many weeks. Well, the Panthers are obviously the favourites in every single game they go into under any circumstance. They've earned that. We've yeah. got to go and play them at home. We've got the side to do it. Mm -hmm. Are you thinking 1 to 12? Oh, yeah. I mean, if we beat, if, I'll, I'll say this now, if we beat Penrith 13 plus, I will do the show next week naked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, don't win that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, another cracking game. 7.30 in Sydney, the South Sydney Rabbitohs against the Melbourne Storm. Ooh. No Pappenhausen here. Uh, Melbourne have got to bounce back. Look, the Storm never lose two in a row. They never lose three in a row. They never lose four in a row. Surely Melbourne get this one back. Jerome Hughes can't play that badly again. I've actually tipped South. You've tipped South? Yeah. I want oh. South to win this game. But I want them to get really battered for the week after. That'd be great. Thinking purely as a Sharks fan, this would be ideal. But again, Jerome Hughes has had probably his two worst games of his career in the past fortnight. He'll be man of the match by a long way this weekend. Uh, two o'clock on Sunday afternoon, the Canary Bulldogs take on your Gold Coast Titans. My beloved Ugh, Gold Coast Titans. And I have seen here that you've tipped them. Well, I did. Yes, I've tipped the Titans. It's gone so well for me thus far. I mean, it doesn't really matter who you tip in this game because no, there's going to be no winner from this. This is going no, to be an look, awful us, game. Us fans will be the real losers. Okay? Yeah, I'm going to go for the dogs in this one just to go different from you. I'll go the Titans. I think... Um, AJ Brimson's going to do something. AJ Brimson's going to... He was good this weekend. Shush. He was terrible. Uh, and four o'clock to finish it off. Speaking of terrible, the North Queensland Cowboys, they aren't. The West Tigers, they are. Oh, oh, this dear. is going to be oh, awful. The, um, the Cowboys coming off a loss... We'll be smiting. Is that the word I'm looking for? Smiting? Whatever. Smitten? No, not smitten. Smiting. They're going to kill the West Tigers. Yeah, they're going to treat them like uh, With smite. Kittens. Yeah, they're, they're going to treat them like kittens. And uh, actually destroy. I, I'm going to say this. I don't think the Tigers are going to score a try. No. This will be 40. Don't prove us wrong, Cowboys. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Rugby League Outlaws brought to you by Punctured Media, our good friends at Top Sports, onelittlefootyfan.com.au and the Stubby Club. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Absolutely. Uh, also as well, give Guru and Kate some love as well. We yeah. love having them on every week. Uh, trash Dan and I, follow us on Twitter, all the socials where you can. Dan? Buy the shirts!